guys. Welcome to Art Talk. Uh, I'm just adjusting the the uh, camera here so that it's somewhat framed well. Uh, what with all the uh, hair nonsense going on, uh, I'm doing the best that I can. Let me adjust this light so it's not so much in my glasses. Uh, welcome to Art Talk. What's up, mate? Michael, good to see you. Scott, Despore, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for joining us today on uh, uh, today's episode of our of Art Talk. Chris Erickson, Secret Car Club Events. What's up, people? I hope you had a, a, a good week this week. I certainly have had an interesting week. Um, Timmy McDougal, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. This is going to be cool. Got some fun stuff for you guys today. Um, I don't have my second camera going on, just uh, just the normal camera. Uh, wow, what uh, what is going on in the state of the world? Wow, crazy. Uh, lots of uh, stuff going on. Uh, but uh, this is Art Talk, so uh, we're not going to be addressing um, the state of the nation and, uh, and all this kind of stuff. We're going to be addressing coolness because uh, we are custodians of cool, like Steve Gelman, who just joined us. Uh, yeah, we're going to get the, uh, get the ball rolling here. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of flabbergasted at, um, uh, at, at what, what's happening in the world, but, uh, I'm also, uh, very, very grateful that, uh, that I have had a chance to, uh, certainly try to educate myself in a way that brings more peace and joy and, and goodness to myself. Uh, my family and uh, uh, my friends and 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 good things in the world, and we got some good news for you, you today. We got some great news, some some spectacular news actually on uh, several uh, fronts. So I'm very excited uh, to announce a few things. But before I do, uh, my name is Fireball. It is my legal first name. It's it's my given name. It's not like a a joke or a nickname or any of that kind of nonsense. John Pearly Huffman. What a great middle name. Dang, boy! Pearly! I love it. I love it. Uh, William Robertson, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is Art Talk, and uh, I am Fireball. Uh, we we do this every weekday. I mean, sorry, every uh, week. We were doing it every weekday, but we're now doing it once a week on Mondays. Uh, that allows us to uh, to cultivate some of the things that we talk about here on Art Talk. And uh, today's subject, uh, where does real energy come from? Yeah, as always, we start up here in a superficial manner by asking questions like, where does energy come from? Well, it comes from a plug in the wall, right? I mean, yeah, a normal answer to something like that. Uh, we are going back to our talk Monday through Friday. No, no, we're just, uh, our talk is on Mondays. And uh, uh, because we, there's just too many th other things that are going on, and I'll, I'll get into what is going on very, very shortly here. Uh, very excited about it. Uh, some really uh, good news on several fronts, several compartments. But our talk is specifically designed to help you guys be creatively powerful, especially in a time where uh, your uh, your um, uh, your mental capacity is being challenged with all the things that are going on in the world, and uh, people have a propensity, obviously, to get angry, to uh, um, react to the things that are going on in the world instead of um, making better choices. Uh, understanding that what we push out into the world mentally is what comes back to us. So the more we watch the news, the more we cultivate the idea of negativity, the more we uh, jump on board with a lot of the anger and rage and anxiety that's happening, the more we're going to attract that into our world. So we have to be very careful. It doesn't mean that you don't, you're not conscious of the things that are going on in the world. It's important to be aware. Uh, but with all that's going on in the world, there's there's a lot more. You know, I mean, like the oceans are dirty and, and you know, pick your poison. There's, there's all kinds of things that are happening in this world. Uh, even when there isn't, uh, you know, riots and, and political stuff, there's always something. There's always something that's happening in the world. Um, so uh, at the same token, there's always something that's really good that's happening. Thus, art talk is really good. And this is what we're going to we're going to start on today. So, um uh number 1, we have launched uh after 2 months of work, we have launched our official next coloring book which is the Camaro coloring book. Now, I don't have a finished copy of the book here because it just launched and the copy is on its way to me, uh, the finished uh, uh, production copy. But you can go on Amazon and you can get the the book, but these are all the sketches. 
These are all the original sketches from the book. I can show you kind of what you're going to get inside there. Uh, let's pick one. How about this one? Yep. So you're going to get all kinds of insane Camaro uh, coolness that's happening if you want to color. And now's a good time to color because it certainly cultivates a, uh, a sense of uh, peacefulness. And and we got to look out for the people that we love. If you guys have family members and you have kids or grandkids or or anybody in the world that uh, that you care about, uh, coloring or, you know, fishing, anything that you do, you can do together in a calm sort of manner. Uh, wrestling might be kind of fun for some of you. Uh, not for me, necessarily. But some of you may want to do some things with your family. So the all-new Camaro coloring book uh, is uh, is officially available on Amazon. So we're excited about that. But we're also announcing, and I think I announced it on the last Art Talk, uh, unless you missed it, is that we are doing the official Tony Dow coloring book, which I'm very excited about. Super excited. It's going to be our next book. It's going to be launching as of right now, August 1st. And uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a chronology of Tony's life as he's, uh, it came from Leave it to Beaver. Uh, as you know, Tony was Wally on Leave it to Beaver. And he has a massive following of, uh, it just kind of blows my mind that, that these people are still watching Leave it to Beaver. It's the number one uh, uh, aired show on the planet and uh, has always been. It's never been off the air. And uh, so uh, we decided to do a coloring book of Tony's life, of his cars and his sailing and his ocean experiences and his experiences on Leave it to Beaver, all that kind of stuff. So if you're a Tony fan, you might be into that. Uh, if you're into cars, then we got the, the, uh, the Camaro coloring book. But um, there's two other things that are happening. Very excited. And uh, uh, one of them is happening in a, in a week and the other one is happening uh, soon. So the one that's happening in the week is that I was invited to give a, a Toastmasters talk, what they're calling a Tim talk. I don't even know what the hell that is. But it's a, a, it's a, a really nice, amazing in, invitation from Toastmasters. If you guys have never experienced them, uh, Toastmasters is a, a very large company. Thank you. Door opens on its own. And a dog appears. Poof! Uh, a um, Toastmasters is a, an amazing company that helps you to be able to be a public speaker and, and to uh, to build confidence and lots of really great things. So we're going to be doing a an epic, uh, 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 it's, it's a YouTube live, but uh, we're going to be using Zoom also. But there's going to be a YouTube link on Saturday, uh, June 6th. I'm going to be doing a live Tim talk, which is going to be kind of like an art talk in a way, but it's it's about 30 to 45 minutes. And we're going to be specifically talking about uh, cultivating your life from the power of choice. So uh, we're going to get into that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like an art talk that happens on uh, on uh, uh, Facebook Live here, but it's open to the rest of the world. So we're going to have a lot more people and uh, and. Uh, uh, people can ask, actually ask questions and stuff like that. So you guys can interact in a way that isn't just typing your question here on Facebook Live. So it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time with that. I'll give you more details on that towards the end of the week. But the big news, the big news. Uh, you know, we, we have all this virus uh, concern and a lot of these things. But uh, I did get a call from the Malibu Country Mart. And it's official. Wheels and Waves is going to be back on June, uh, ju sorry, July 19th. July 19th. So we have uh, about seven, eight weeks to get prepared. Uh, and they have uh, quite a bit of work to, do, to be done at the Country Mart. But Wheels and Waves here in Malibu, our car show, our cars and coffee event is going to be storming back. Uh, some of the news there, though, uh, Coffee Bean has closed. They are whoosh, no longer uh, 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 going to be a sponsor on Wheels and Waves. The coffee will not be available there. So you either have to bring your own coffee or go across the street to Starbucks and uh, stop there, grab a Starbucks, and then make your way in. Uh, we will still have Hot Wheels. We will still have all kinds of amazing cars, all kinds of amazing people. Uh, we're going to be recommending that you, you know, as of right now, I would say, you know, wear a mask if you're comfortable doing that. Uh, if uh, if you're comfortable talking to someone from six feet away, you can do that too. Uh, but July 19th, uh, I, I hope things might be better by then. And uh, we'll get the ball rolling. So we have a poster that's going to be going up a little bit later today. So look for that on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, on the blog at fireballtim.com and all that kind of stuff. So let's get into today's Art Talk, shall we? Because <laughs> that's the reason you guys are here. Matthew Holt, who else we got? 
uh, Christine Unitas. Good morning, Craig Casey. What's up, Craig? Good to see you. Monique Wood is in the house. Uh, very nice. Okay, uh, today's subject, where does real energy come from? Well, I was contemplating this uh, recently. And uh, the interesting thing is that when we go out and we buy a computer or we buy a flashlight or we buy uh, uh, some type of electrical device, uh, we, we, the, the, that device doesn't work. It's inert. Uh, it's something that doesn't have any function until we add energy. We add energy into it in the form of a battery or we plug it into the, into the wall. And uh, we take a lot of these things for granted, that energy just flows and you know, we pay a little bit of money for, for the house and then the house is like flip, a switch is flipped and then suddenly we can plug our computer or something into the wall and energy flows. And I think a lot of us take that for granted and we don't necessarily understand that without energy, without having that energy, uh, uh, life would be a bit of a challenge. We kind of go back to caveman days, which, you know, you can, you know, and there, until someone develops a, a device that like uh, whatever they call those things where it turns off all the energy and we go back to the dark ages, <laughs> uh, like, like some of the movies that we've seen, uh, energy will continue to flow. And uh, the interesting thing about that is that uh, these devices are inert when they're by themselves, right? You, you buy something that's in a package and you open it up and you can't press a button and nothing happens until you add uh, the battery into it or you plug it in and then suddenly, poof, it comes to life, right? Interesting. So um, I just started thinking about, about these things. But the only device that you don't have to plug in, which is really interesting, that works on its own is us right? Uh, energy is uh, flowing through us, and that's life. Uh, so to contemplate the idea of what life is, is, uh, is really kind of how we're taking our talk up here, asking the question, what, it, what is energy? And we're going to go down slowly into the depths. Where we'll end up over here somewhere, maybe like right there, okay? So, and now the question about energy is, we understand that energy is everywhere. It's present um, on other planets, you know, the plants that we've been to. It's present um, in uh, Saskatchewan as much as it is uh, in um, Atascadero. That's a town up north. That's a real town. Pretty much anywhere you go, uh, energy is present. And uh, it's everywhere. And, and uh, the thing about energy is that we don't necessarily ever see the energy itself. We just see the effect, right? You plug something in and the thing works, the effect right? Uh, you see that, that we uh, uh, walk around and we do all the things that we do, yet we don't see the energy that's flowing through us that allows us to do that. Now, the thing about our energy, this is, this is kind of my biggest question, my, the biggest thing that I want you guys to contemplate this week and to understand as we're going to get to this point, is that uh, since we don't plug in in the traditional sense, and since we don't use a battery, you know, battery inside our head uh, somewhere. Uh, and that, that, that battery depletes. We got to go buy a new one. Uh, how do we connect to energy, right? Now, the simple understanding that you wake up in the morning, you're full of energy, you go about the day, go do all kinds of stuff, and slowly, over time, energy gets depleted. Now, many of you may say, well, energy comes from food right? Uh, and food certainly does sustain energy, but you can't uh, continue to eat for 10 days straight and continue to hold up that energy. So the majority of energy does not come from food. It, uh, it, certainly you can deplete yourself and you can have a hypoglycemic fit uh, if you don't eat something or don't eat the right food. And food certainly helps. Water certainly helps, a variety of things. But real energy the real energy does not come from food. It does not come from something that we put into ourselves. So what do we do? What do we do when we get, um, uh, we get exhausted? Let's say we're exhausted at 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, many of us decide as you get older that you're going to take a nap, right? So uh, you got to go lay down because you're tired. You got to go lay down and then you're going to be, uh, have a little bit more energy when you wake up. Now, the interesting thing about that is you're not plugging into anything. You don't go lay down and plug yourself into the wall. You're not a human Tesla, right? That's not how it works. You just go lay down. You go lay down and then you don't talk, you don't move, uh, you don't do anything. Pardon me. And you, uh, you suddenly wake up an hour later and boom, you have, you have all this energy, right? Interesting. But we never ask ourselves, how does that work? How, how do we 
How do we have energy? How do we get energy? Where does the energy come from? And we've talked many times on Art Talk here what source is and the fact that source or uh, whatever you want to call it, God, uh, universal um, energy, uh, the great uh, poobah in the sky, whatever you want to call it, uh, source is there and is constantly flowing through you. Now, as we use it up, we go lay down and our body gets refilled, refilled because we're not using it. Uh, but this is the only, the first part of, of source, the first part of energy, is that energy gives us the ability to move around and to function and do things in the world. But that is not its true source. That is not its ultimate source. Because energy is actually a living entity. It's not an inert thing like you plug it into the wall and, you know, a dynamo is rotating somewhere off site and, and it's flowing through this wire and it connects to your, your outlet and you plug it in and then you get these, this energy. Uh, where does the energy come from that fills the dynamo, right? The, the same process is happening at the source to which the, where the dynamo is sending energy to us. Uh, the dynamo is collecting energy from where? right? It's collecting energy from the same place that we collect energy when we go lay down on the bed. Now, the, the thing about this is that I'm trying to convey to you guys is that I want you to understand that not only is when you go lay down is source filling you up with energy. Uh, I want you to contemplate this the next time you go lay down and take a nap or, or you go rest in a chair or anything like this. This is vital. This is vital that you do this. Now, when you're younger, you don't want to do this. In fact, you make fun of people that go and take naps, right? You you uh, uh, you think they're a bunch of lazy asses, and oh God, I just gotta go lay down again, a bunch of babies. Uh, well, the idea that this is only this only happens in in America, uh, in other countries like Mexico, it's called siesta, right? Right after lunch, you go take a, a short, quick cat nap, fifteen minutes, half an hour, hour, whatever it is that you need. And in other countries, it's very common. Very common to do this. In America, it's not so common. Just like in America, it was not so common to wear masks over your face when you're sick, right? Because in many ways, we can be a little bit of a selfish country, but, uh, you know, we're just, that's what happens when you have a capitalist society. But when, you know, as we're going through all this kind of stuff, that's going to change, is that when people are sick, they're going to wear masks, uh, uh, hopefully, and that tells you something, that's a conscientious, conscientious living. But as you lay down and you begin to fill up with energy, I want you to think about the fact that your body is filling with source. And not only is, do you, is your body naturally on its own, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to like lay down there and say, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm, just go ahead. You know, fill me with, with energy. It just kind of happens on its own. But that is a very, very small part of source that we're using. And we're missing the boat here. And this is my, my impetus. This is my point. Hi, Dana. Well, Dana's not my point, but I'm saying hi to Dana. And Janet and Steiner. Good to see you guys. Joseph Stone from Australia. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. So when we go and we lay down and we turn off our bodies essentially. We don't use our bodies so that it can fill with source. Uh, the same can be done with our minds, with our, our well, not necessarily our minds, but our, our ability to think clearly. Now, there's a lot of nastiness going on in the world right now. There's a lot of people that aren't thinking clearly and doing things that, uh, um, uh, that they justify as okay because something bad happened. And this is a very common thing uh, in a, uh, a mob mentality, in a group mentality, that suddenly uh, safety in numbers, uh, you can ran, go and ransack a place and steal stuff. And, and it, it happens. It's not new. This has happened in the 60s, you know, 50s. And it's, it's happened all the time. This is not new, what's happening that's going on. This is uh, what Will Smith said recently. This is not new. It's just being filmed, right? Everybody's got a smartphone now. So uh, we just see it. We can, we can see a lot of the things that are going on that have pretty much always happened in some capacity. Now, the flavor of the month right now is that this is this is what's happening in the world. And uh, uh, but it's happened it happened with Rodney King, it happened with a lot of other things, and it happens from time to time. Uh, but people react in ways that are um, uh, that you can see they're affecting each other by their vibrations, right? So it's 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 more important for you guys right now 
to cultivate the right vibration for yourselves so that you can be clear on what it is. I mean, uh, by the fact that you're clear on what it is that you want for your life. Now, if you want goodness and peace and joy and to cultivate something good for your life and to attract good things into your life, it requires you to do one thing. The one thing that those people aren't doing. It requires you to think in a way that expands and enhances your life in some way. And uh, you can joke and say, well, a brand new pair of shoes that I got for free that I stole out of a store, uh, that enhances my life. Uh, yeah, that may seem the case, but it's not. And you guys know this. Okay? Karmatically, uh, what you put out there comes back to you. If you go and steal things, things will be stolen from you. If you go and give love to someone, love will come back to you. If you go and you hurt someone physically, then physical pain will come back to you. Uh, you get what you put out there. That's the law. That's the law of nature. And the, and the majority of these people that are out there doing these things are, don't understand this. But you guys do, don't you? Okay? So this week, I want you to think about when you lay down and you connect with source, I want you to connect on two levels. I want you to allow the connection with your body and let your body fill up today. You may take a nap today at 1 2, 3, whatever it is that you, you get tired. And I want you to give yourself permission to do that because it's important. Many people lay down and they got to go hide and not, you know, because they're afraid that somebody might think that they're doing something weird, you know, or you're not allowed to, to rest. You are. You are. In fact, it's mandatory. You, you need to, so that you can be your best self, so that you can think clearly and calmly, and you can make uh, good quality decisions, not rash, rash decisions, not mob decisions, okay? I want you to think about that. Uh, that's how we fill ourselves up. But not only will you fill yourselves up uh, physically, but I want you guys to fill yourselves up mentally. I want you guys to connect with source and, uh, and you do that by thinking thoughts of love, by thinking, uh, thinking about the people that you care about thinking about the life that you want, thinking about the, the things that you think are cool. And that's the true meaning of becoming a custodian of cool. Okay? And you guys are that. You don't really become one uh, because in every, every moment, every choice, and every day, uh, you have an opportunity to be a custodian of cool. And you can go back and forth, up and down. You know? The point is, is, is we want to be level. We want to keep our mind centered on what we consider to be something of value to our lives. And I want you guys to work on that today, okay? This is our talk. This is where we, we discuss these kinds of things, where we can expand our lives creatively, uh, going in your backyard and, and uh, uh, creating a garden, uh, you know, uh, making a great dish for your husband, your wife, or your kids, uh, doing something that uh, is a creative expression that affects the world in a positive way is the whole point. Is the whole point, people. This is this is what we're trying to convey. If everyone understood this, uh, there wouldn't be the things that are going on in the world right now. So uh, we we cannot change a lot of those things. The only thing that we can change is our own personal experience. And I want you guys to work on that today. Okay. Uh, this is our talk. I really appreciate you guys watching, hanging out with me today. And uh, we we do this every Monday um, at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time from Malibu, California. And uh, we're doing our best to help you guys be creatively powerful. Uh, once again, our Camaro coloring book is on Amazon. Very exciting. All you got to do is search Fireball Camaro or Fireball coloring books and, uh, and you'll get to the book. Uh, and we also have the official Tony Dow book coming. And also I mentioned two things that Wheels and Waves is slated for July 19th. We will be back in force. It's going to be an amazing show. You guys are all invited, except for the guys in Australia unless you guys want to take a flight, which that would be cool, you know. Uh, and then also this coming weekend on Saturday, I'll be doing a Zoom YouTube talk for Toastmasters. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a blast. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Have a spectacular week. Keep in touch with me uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those places. Let me know how things are going. This is how we communicate throughout the week. But practice makes perfect. It always does. We'll see you guys soon.